Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about polyglandular autoimmune syndrome type 1 and 2. If you haven't listened to my presentations on adrenal gland, please kindly do. I have published seven presentations on my channel when it comes to adrenal insufficiency. Okay, with that, let's go. Polyglandular autoimmune syndrome type 1 is also known as autoimmune polyendocrinopathy candidiasis ectoderma dystrophy. The autoimmune polyendocrinopathy candidiasis ectoderma dystrophy is associated with mutations in autoimmune regulator gene on chromosome 21. And that is found in thymus, lymph nodes, pancreas, adrenal cortex, and fetal liver. Polyglandular autoimmune syndrome type 1 is a very rare condition and it is recessively inherited. There's likelihood of multiple autoimmunities and is associated with HLA, DR, and DQ genes that involve and actually play part in the type of autoimmune that affects a person who will eventually develop. The features of polyglandular type 1 are essentially that there will be more hypoparathyroidism than you are going to find in type 2. The chronic mucocutaneal candidiasis of the mouth is the hallmark of polyglandular type 1. The candidiasis is first to appear among all the symptoms and it will be recurrent. It's going to appear within the first two years of life. It can be found on the nails, diaper rash, and the skin of the, of the affected child. The adrenal insufficiency will occur later in life between the age of 10 to 15 years. Hypogonadism is the primary problem in about 60%. But they'll be dealing with hypothyroidism and type 1 diabetes as well. The likelihood of hypopituitarism and, of course, central diabetes insipidus. Other features of polygonal type 1 that will be non endocrine in nature will include malabsorption syndrome, alopecia totalis, or alopecia areata. Initials anemia, with legal and chronic active hepatitis. Okay, now polyglandular autoimmune syndrome type 2, formerly known as Smith syndrome. And here is going to be all about adrenal insufficiency. The autoimmune thyroid disease is greater here than in type 1. Type 1 diabetes mellitus is greater here than in type 1. We'll also be battling with primary hypogonadism. Also, we'll be dealing with central diabetes insipidus. But we're going to have less hypopituitarism and less hypoparathyroidism. In type 2, the non endocrine features will include vitiligo, alopecia ileata or alopecia totalis, initial anemia, myasthenia gravis, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, surgeon syndrome, and rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Polygandular autoimmune syndrome type 2 is more common than polygandular autoimmune syndrome type 1. And in type 2, primary adrenal insufficiency is the main clinical feature. To those who are confused and asking the question, what is your business with polygandular autoimmune syndromes 1 and 2, well, you have the answer right now. It's as a result of 
try to find out what are the causes of adrenal insufficiency. And with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. If you haven't checked my channel for class one to seven, when it comes to adrenal insufficiency, please kindly do. Remember to share, remember to subscribe. I appreciate it.